companies now have realized that they need to operate at the speed of data. They need to make better decisions, decisions that are more precise, decisions that are timely, and operating at the speed of data will help them become more agile and nimble. Welcome to the Life Sciences Leadership Podcast, where we delve deep into the life sciences industry and uncover effective strategies, innovations, and future trends. Your host, Axtria's Jasmeet Sani, engages highly acclaimed leaders in discussions focused on directing commercial success in the life sciences industry. Whether you're transforming your commercial success strategy or just craving dynamic discussion, this is the show for you. Hello everyone, I'm your host Jasmeet Sani and welcome to the Life Sciences Leadership Podcast brought to you by Axtria. Our goal with this show is to bring to you effective strategies, innovations, and most importantly, people who are driving improved business and patient outcomes within the life sciences industry. Our guest today is Dr. Kedar Nafade. Kedar leads Axia's decision science practice and brings over 20 years of analytics, consulting, and leadership experience. He has a stellar track record as a strategic advisor to executive leadership, building and running large global analytics teams, and accelerating innovation with delivery of analytics using software platforms. Kedar has spent years building advanced analytics applications to solve strategic problems such as commercial strategy, omnichannel resource allocation, market access, patient journey, and supply chain. He is experienced across global markets, including top five EU, Japan, Turkey, and Canada. Before joining Axtria, Kedar held leadership roles at Cognizant, MarketRx, Bell Labs, and Lucent Technologies. He holds a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from IIT Mumbai and a PhD in operations research from Lehigh University. Kedar is also an accomplished musician trained in Indian classical music. Kedar, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jasmeet. It's great to be here and looking forward to the discussion. Absolutely. Kedar, we are here to discuss the future of analytics. But before we delve into the future, it will help our audience to understand the strategic challenges faced by the life sciences organizations specific to drug commercialization. Can you describe these challenges? Or if I may call them, can you describe these drivers of change? Absolutely, Jasmeet. Uh, over the last decade or two, the product portfolios in the life sciences industry have changed significantly from uh, primary care focused medications to specialty and rare diseases. That's one big driver of change. In this process, the pace of clinical innovation in the industry has actually significantly increased, especially so over the last uh, five to 10 years. However, commercial success is not necessarily keeping pace with clinical innovation. Yep. The commercial ecosystem is becoming much more complex. We are, we are in a unique industry where the entity that makes the uh, product use decision, which is often the prescriber or the doctor, the entity that uses the product, which is the patient, and the entity that pays for the product, which is the payer, are three different entities. And the interactions between these entities are now being further influenced by organized providers and by policymakers. Uh, so the, ecos the ecosystem overall of uh, factors that influence drug utilization is becoming much more complex. With the move to specialty and rare diseases, uh, which means going from large patient populations to small patient populations, the affordability and the need for increased patient focus has significantly grown. The third change that's happening is customer communication preferences are changing. Uh, gone are the days where all you needed to do was send sales representatives to physician offices and that was the you know 90 percent of your commercial model. Now customers expect us to communicate with them in many different ways, in different ways, through the sales representative channel, through digital channels, through conferences, through speaker programs, and so forth. 
another uh, uh, factor driving change is the overall concern about healthcare costs in our country and across the world and that is leading to an increase in regulatory and pricing pressures so through all of these increasing challenges for commercialization the life sciences industry has not achieved as much success in launching drugs successfully that they as they had hoped and these factors are only being accelerated by the covid pandemic and drug launches in the next 5 or 10 years in specialty and rare diseases especially i anticipate there will be even more challenging uh, than they were in the in the last decade finally another large uh, trend is that the data in the industry is exploding and with the availability of cloud computing and cloud ai the ability to use uh, the myriad of data sources that are available to make decisions in real time manner transforming your enterprise to become more agile will be a key cornerstone of commercial success in the future kedar your last point is a great segue to my next question you mentioned the data analytics and ai driving every part of the enterprise it will be great to understand how the analytical landscape has changed in the past 5 years and i'm assuming this change cuts across data systems processes and skills required to deliver the analytics can you provide our audience some background on the change that is taking place absolutely uh, a lot has changed in the last 5 to 10 years uh, actually it's funny you know 20 years ago when i first started my career in life sciences i still remember making decks that were trying to convince decision makers to make data driven decisions and gone are those days the yeah. the our clients uh, organizations have realized that they absolutely have to leverage the latest data and analytics for decision making the demand for data driven decision making has accelerated and is increasingly becoming standard across all industries within our industry the number of data sets emr ehr diagnostic data iot data claims data in addition to the prescription payer and other uh, traditional data sources the number of data sets is uh, uh, the data sets is increasing the coverage and the interoperability of those data sets is also progressively getting better what that means is that these data are now being applied to a larger number of use cases across the patient journey and across the drug commercialization journey companies now have realized that they need to operate at the speed of data they need to make better decisions decisions that are more precise decisions that are timely and operating at the speed of data will help them become more agile and nimble and they have recognized in the last 5 years especially that that agility cannot happen without data and analytics finally another facet of change in the last 5 years is that an as an industry as i mentioned earlier we have moved to more specialty and rare uh, diseases medications and with smaller population sizes the cost of care on a, on a per patient basis has increased significantly for our part of the business and contrasting that with the increased focus on overall healthcare cost reduction in the nation and worldwide and the resulting regulatory pressures implies that we as an industry need to deliver superior health outcomes at lower costs and the industry has realized that that has created uh, move to value based contracting several years ago for example and such more interdisciplinary approaches to commercialization where the value chain is more integrated across commercial medical hcor and clinical has started happening so these evolutions towards increased capability in terms of getting more cross disciplinary increased capability in leveraging data and analytics it is certainly happening but it's slower in certain pockets within life science and faster in others for example while more data is available 
many clients haven't yet been able to integrate, store, and analyze the data and bring it to the point of this decision in real time or at the um, at the at the pace of data. Uh, organizations' uh, analytical decision making processes have strengthened overall, but as an industry, I would claim that if you compare ourselves to uh, like an Amazon or a Netflix or other consumer-facing industries, we are we are behind uh, and behind the market rates. But overall, the success in specialty pharmaceutical commercialization will hinge on the use of data and software to find patients, to allocate resources, to communicate with customers through orchestrated omnichannel communication, the opportunity, and I would say the need, the, com the need for competitive, uh, the need for competitiveness to, to use AI ML for near real time decision making. All these needs are very real. And I would claim not yet fully tapped into by the industry. We still have a long way to go. Okay, that, that is a comprehensive overview of the change in the overall landscape. Thanks for setting the context on how rapidly things have evolved and the impending need for new analytical capabilities. Before we get into the how, I want to make sure the audience understands the why. Why do life sciences leaders need to prepare for the future? And what are the consequences if they don't? So I've covered most of that in my in the first couple of responses, but I'll try to summarize it here quickly. You know, commercialization will be more difficult than it was previously. Patients are digitally native and are going to start expecting personalized experiences. HCPs who will want to provide the best patient outcomes and play the right role in providing affordable and effective treatment. Pharma will need to reach out to HCPs differently in an orchestrated omnichannel manner. Pressure from payers and regulatory bodies will, to deliver outcomes at lower cost will continue to increase. The ecosystem consolidations within the provider and payer landscape will continue to increase. Complexities and a myriad of influences affecting commercial success uh, will, be, will be many. So for pharma companies, competitors who are leveraging the best data to make better and quicker decisions who are running more nimble organizations will be a threat. The strength of your analytics can make or break a drug launch and the consequences are serious if you don't jump on this trade. Now that's a great way to summarize the why, uh, Kedar. As you mentioned, the strength of an organization's analytics can make or break a drug launch. And now that we know why the transformation is important, can you talk about the building blocks that life sciences executives must put in place to prepare for the future? There are several building blocks. Uh, data strategy, having a culture of analytics and having the right processes, having the ability to leverage the latest and greatest in analytical techniques, mathematical models, AIML models, having the right technology that will allow you to serve up the analytics to the point of decision. These are all important building blocks. And I would say that the most important building block is having the right strategic analytics partners in your ecosystem. There are many companies who are attempting to build their analytics organizations grounds up within their own uh, infrastructure and ecosystems. And by doing so, they may actually lose the benefits of working with data, software, and analytics providers who will bring them the best of breed capabilities, who will bring them the cross industry experience and ensure that their journey is staying competitive with the rest of their with the rest of their peers just like if you are in the mining business you don't need to be also the company that manufactures mining equipment having strong data and analytics partners i think is a key building block for analytics success for our industry that's a great point, Kedar. You talked about the need for best-in-class technology enablement and software. I believe that means 
software will play a significant role in the future can you talk talk about can you talk about specific benefits of software as it relates to how analytics is done currently in the industry sure just me so as i said data is exploding and it's exploding at a pace at which it can be applied and the pace at which it can be applied to decision making is increasing companies are moving towards real time next best action next best experience with the move to specialty we need to go to not just an acp segment of one for omni channel orchestration but also to a patient segment of one so how can you possibly act in real time with the segment of one mentality which is a mass real time mass customization mindset how can you even imagine getting there without being software driven and amazon and netflix are great examples of this and because of the patient privacy and regulatory environment in our industry sure we may not be able to get all the way there but there is a tremendous opportunity for uh, software to add uh, speed and agility the other benefit the second exacerbating factor is that over the last 10 years there's been a consistent gap between supply and demand when it comes to data science professionals and that gap is only going to increase the ability to find and deploy the right talent with the right quantitative skills the right computational skills the problem solving skills the communication skills people who can help help clients formulate the right business questions the right analytical solutions and make the right recommendations there's very few people in the industry who can do that and this talent shortage is only going to get worse software is going to need software will be a critical part of helping us as an industry overcome this talent shortage and software is not just about automation and saving time or reducing resources there are several significant benefits from productization the productization approach can be applied to the vast array of use cases that we solve for our clients today the commercial model designs marketing mix payer segmentation contracting go no go decisions uh, omni channel next best action patient finding and so on and so forth for each of these use cases productization will bring automation for sure but the creation of the product will also benefit from the cross industry experiences that are leveraged during product development so the best of the methodologies and the best techniques for specific problems will will be brought to bear on every use case or every application so the effectiveness of problem solving will increase of course with productization reusability will increase collaboration abilities will increase and over the medium term i'm not even saying long term in for certain use cases productization will help us go from automation to autonomy where decisions are made by the machines or if not final decisions being made by machines products will significantly augment human beings making the right decisions uh, through serving up of uh, things such as self service analytics and last but not the least products will help increase the speed of execution and provide agility to organizations so keda that brings us to an all important question that many in the data analytics field are asking as software ai and automation play an increasingly important role does it mean that all analytics within an organization will run on platforms in the near future or are we going to see a mix of conventional methods and platform usage in other words are we going to see lesser number of data scientists or will there be a mix so i think there is two or three uh, questions in what you asked i think that the evolution from a people driven analytics organization to a product driven analytics organization is what we will see in the next 5 years even when we have a fully product driven analytics organization i don't think that the need for people will go away right what what will happen i think the need for i think that 
even after productization i would predict my intuition says that there will still be a shortage of data scientists because the products will make the current analytics consultants more effective speedier in in delivering solutions to the business two changes will happen because of that first they will become they will transform from people who are writing the models and creating the code to people who are actually using models to solve business problems and they will become better problem solvers they will become better consultants they will become better advisors to the business that's one evolution we see that they, that the data scientists of today which is sometimes a catch all term that they will break into two different segments people who build models who bring all of the algorithmic expertise the computational expertise the coding expertise and then people who use models who will use products to solve business problems uh, and cobble together uh, different solutions for our clients so the business consultants as they start becoming advisors consultants and advisors you will see an increased need for analytics the number of use cases that it gets applied to in the industry across all of the uh, functional areas commercial clinical hor medical rd the number of use cases will increase so i think that we will always be in a uh, in an environment where there is going to be products and people working together platforms and people working together uh where the platforms make the people much more effective and analytics will further spread its wings and have even broader impact on the enterprise that makes sense kedar thanks for clarifying so the data scientists and data analysts are not going away rather their roles are going to evolve in the closing it would be great if you can talk about some of the innovations you have delivered your customers in the recent past as they relate to the future of analytics can you provide some examples and case studies for sure jasmeet I and mean, we are a very innovative organization productization is part of our core and we have uh, innovated across all the different functional areas that we work in whether it comes from marketing mix industrialization to enabling customers implement omni channel next best action to in the covid driven innovations where we have done a lot of sub national work in covid whether it comes to promotional planning whether it comes to sub national forecasting ai ml for patient finding and patient disease progression uh, and in terms of getting the insights to the point of use uh, our uh, flagship uh, product commercial operations that provides commercial operations on the cloud Uh, sales iq we have delivered significant innovation in sales iq by enabling multi channel and omni omni channel call planning uh, during the pandemic in a matter of weeks on the platform and i can go on and on and we, th- these innovations have delivered great business benefits to clients 5 to 10% increase in the top line 30% lower resources 30 to 40% reductions in cycle time the ability to conduct more complex analysis but do so more frequently the ability to launch a new commercial model much more rapidly from commercial model design to reps and account managers in the field with a much shorter time increasing the go to increase the agility for going to market all of these innovations have driven revenue saved cost and made our client organizations much more agile much more data driven and more nimble and that is amazing kedar and thanks for all those insights before we go i would like to summarize our discussion so the audience has some key takeaways so what i understand is one the future will be much more daunting if the leadership does not use analytics as a strategic weapon they will get slaughtered two productization is key organizations ability to leverage software and ai will be critical in the future and three the building blocks are the enabling layer leaders must make sure to focus on all three of them have a data strategy in place have the right org structure and processes with emphasis on culture 
and have the right partners who can enable the best in class technology and analytics is there anything else you would like to add to this summary i uh, know jasmeet this is uh, this is a great summary you 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 got it all thank you kedar okay, this has been an extremely insightful conversation you talked about one of the most critical areas that can make or break the future of a life sciences organization analytics is key to success and life sciences organizations must transform to get ahead of the competition i'm sure our audience will be able to apply some of these learnings to their business and prepare for the exciting future ahead before we go is there anything that our audience can refer to if they wanted to learn more about this topic so absolutely you can certainly go to the website axia.com and under the axia insights section we have an abundance of our thought leadership in multiple areas pertaining to drug commercialization uh, there's white papers blogs videos five step guides uh, podcasts and much more so uh, please go to our website Uh, you the it also has very nice search features you can search our thought leadership content by specific keyword and uh, happy learning kedar thank you so much for coming to the show and sharing your knowledge and deep experience in this space thank you so much jasmeet to the audience thank you so much for joining us today and tune in soon for the next episode Thanks for joining us on the Life Sciences Leadership Podcast. If you loved this episode, please share with friends and subscribe on your favorite streaming platform. For more information, visit lifesciencespodcast.com. Until next time.